This is Cameron Chai bringing you another episode of Azo TV. And today we're speaking to Dwayne Sword from Thermo Fisher Scientific, and he's going to tell us about their handheld Raman instruments. Well, good afternoon. What I'd like to introduce is the uh, latest portfolio from Thermo Scientific on handheld vibrational spectroscopy. It's actually the coming together of two acquisitions that were made in 2010. One company was called Ahura Scientific, building handheld vibrational spectroscopy for FTIR and Raman. Then in the middle of 2010, we acquired a company called Polychromix, which is the leader and still the only handheld GMP certified near infrared. So this one's uh, more of the, uh, the gun style, point and shoot identification and quantification. With FTIR and Raman, we do identification only. The reason we have these various instruments is fairly simple. We focus on end user markets and applications. We started with safety and security, which is military, fire, police, narcotics, customs. We're really looking for explosives, we're looking for precursors, we're looking for chemical weapons and weapons of mass destruction. With Raman, the great attribute of Raman spectroscopy is non-contact, non-contamination, non-invasive. So if we have a chemical inside of a glass vial or something inside of a tube, it's just point and shoot and it gives me identification. Not everything works with Raman spectroscopy. So to complement and for confirmatory analysis, that's why we brought out the near-infrared instrument. This is the world's smallest FTIR, but just because we made it small, we did not want to compromise the analytical attributes of the instrument. So for example, for those that understand spectroscopy, this is a 650 to 4,000 wave number instrument with four wave number resolution. Those numbers should impress those that understand FTIR. That's equivalent to a very good benchtop instrument. With the near infrared, the applications really are food, feed, agriculture, plastics, and recycling. With the FTIR and Raman, as I say, it's safety, security, and military. On Monday this week, we introduced TrueScan RM. It's our second generation Raman. It's frankly not only a step forward, it's a major leap forward. It's half the size, half the weight, five to 10 times faster for a typical scan. Already TrueScan was a revolution. This is the second generation TrueScan introduced probably even before we needed to, but we really want to push the envelope of capability. So to log in, it's a fingerprint reader. I can run a sample. So here I've got some simple samples. I've got different connectors. I'll go with the vial holder here. I'm just gonna run a test. So the whole idea would be keep it simple. So I go into the barcode reader. There's a little barcode camera here. I'm gonna read the, uh, the barcode. Excuse me, read the barcode, pull up a method. Essentially on the instrument, we can carry up to 30,000 different formulations, different uh, original product or final product. We're looking for counterfeit drugs or we're looking for gross contamination of raw material. So I can go down and say, start a test, put in my sample, or I could just hold it up if I wanted to right against the sample. I'm just gotta run a test. So there's no configuration, there's no calibration, there's no warm up time. You saw the light go off, that means the laser's done. It's pass, it's good. Well, that's very straightforward. The whole idea would be is, well, what if something isn't what I expect it to be? So I'm gonna take a, another chemical that happens to look like, it happens to look like the, um, I think this was methanol in here. Uh, of course, I know that this is not methanol. It's now going through a permutation analysis. We're doing full mixture deciphering. It's about 13 million different permutations running on the instrument it's going to fail once it fails depending on the level of the operator i'm running as the administrator i want to go in and find out why it failed so i'm going to go in and review my runs it failed open the result it says discover a positive match the instrument knows what what it is so let's find out what it was it was cyclohexane for those that are in the uh spectroscopy domain they'd like to see the fingerprint the spectral acquisition so the blue is actually what's in the library the black is what we scanned in three seconds you can export that put it in the result email it to somebody that would like to do further forensics so we're trying to keep it simple we're trying to keep the workflow repeatable the speed is truly amazing and not only is it good for raw material the thing that makes us very proud frankly as engineers and scientists it's also being used by governments around the world for counterfeit analysis looking at substandard medications, looking at hospitals and clinics. So solving real human health problems, not only raw material. So it's truly a revolution. I'm very proud to be a part of it. 
So it's good for detection of counterfeit drugs? Yes, Imitation absolutely. drugs? Absolutely. If you have some Viagra on you, uh, we can test that. So yes, it's looking for counterfeit formulations. What we see here is, this is chemistry. It's a formulation. We're looking at the formulation. It could be a tablet, it could be a vaccine, it could be a prescription medication. You teach the instrument, you're authentic. So once you scan that authentic, it could take anywhere from five minutes to 30 minutes to add something to our library. Once you add it to the library, this is just a computer. You connect it to your PC, you can scan that material, copy it to other instruments or email it to a colleague that also has a true scan. And then you can build a library and email those library items around the world. So yes, you can have raw material or you can have tablets, vaccines and final product. And you're also saying that uh, being Raman, it can scan straight through the container materials? Yeah, the logic is very simple. If you can see the material with your eye, then the laser can see it. At the end of the day, it's just light. We're shining light onto a sample. If the light cannot reach the sample, then I can't gain information about the sample. So if this liquid was inside of a, a tin can, I'm not going to be able to identify. I must have a transparent container. If I've got a bag of, uh, on the table here, I've got a bag, I can go through 30 layers of polyethylene bag. Thank you, Richard. So it literally, it says, take off the adapter, point and shoot. It'll do the same concept. And that's just beautiful, even for forensic evidence. You do not want to touch the sample for forensic uh, cross-contamination reasons, or even for safety for that matter. All right, Dwayne, thanks very much for telling us about the new handheld Raman TrueScan. If anybody wants more information about that, they can go to your website. Just go to thermo.com forward slash Ahura, A-H-U-R-A. All right, Dwayne, thanks for taking a few minutes to tell us about the TrueScan handheld Raman instrument. Thank you very much.